If everybody would like to be quiet a minute, the microphones aren't working today, so I'm going to try and shout and make sure everybody can hear, but you will need to raise your voices today because there is a problem with the mics. Um, and I have to start by reading this. I am obliged to inform you that this meeting is being recorded. Members of the public are entitled to record the proceedings and are expected to give prior notice so that any additional measures that may assist can be put into place. Any member of the public who has any concerns should raise them now. Right, moving on. Item one is apologies for absence, and we have apologies from uh, Councillor Joyce Barrow. Um, Lee's missing. Are we expecting him? No, no, I, I, he's usually here, but perhaps he'll appear. Right, disclosed, disclosable pecuniary interests. No. Item three, the minutes. The, the minutes are included in the uh, in the pack. Any comments on the minutes? Or we accept them as true record? <coughs> yeah, right, they seem to be accepted. Moving on. Item four, public question time. I believe there were some public questions. What, is it public questions that Rob's got? Yeah. Right. Right, so Julian Francis, is he here? No, I've, yeah, I've, I've you want to come it. forward? Sorry, there isn't a mic, so you will have to no. shake a little bit. I believe you have very, I think, uh, all the family members who have the uh, written question and the supporting excellent uh, explanatory documents. Yeah, um, yeah I've certainly yeah. seen this. Yeah. Um, so the, the main aim of the national policy and local plan review is to provide homes in the right places, hopefully at the right price, affordable for people. Mm -hmm. um, if the hierarchy of settlements that you approved in October is to be used in support of the definitions in the preferred options document, and we believe that the data must be 100% correct. Unfortunately, there are some identified errors that we believe are factual for one about 24 of the settlements that have determined the outcome. And we just wish to ask how the Cabinet and the officers are going to address that now, rather than the risk of it being left at a later date and picked up by the examination inspector and possibly putting the county at risk of um, unplanned development at a later date. Okay, thank you. Councillor Robert Macy uh, will respond. Um, obviously you've had the question and it's very technical in what it's referring to and so on. Um, so, I mean, from, from our point of view, these issues have previously been raised as part of the previous question to Cabinet on the 15th of November last year um, during a meeting with the Trevon and Rural Protection Group that we had on the 21st of November. Um, they've also been raised in the consultation response from the group as well uh, to the preferred scale of distribution and development consultation. The final methodology set out in the hierarchy of settlements was one that was approved by Cabinet on, in October, on the 18th of October. And at the moment, there's no plans to review it. However, I can confirm that consistent with the commitment previously given to the group, officers are reviewing and correcting any factual errors in Table 10 that were identified in responses to the recent consultation. And we will also confirm <coughs> whether these have any implications for the identification of community hubs as summarised in paragraph 5.40, which they refer to in the question of the approved hierarchy of settlements. As the local plan review proceeds, there will be an opportunity for any unresolved objections to the approach taken by Shropshire Council to identify community hubs to be considered by an independent planning inspector as part of the formal examination in public. So. Okay, right, thank you. Just, just, just allow me, Chairman. Well, it's, it's about table 10. I can do it well, quickly I'm, because. Yeah, yeah. Can I say on table 10, the corrected version, the two parishes in my area. The comments are blank, and I am aware the comments have been sent in questioning the scoring and the hubs, and officers have been on to one parish council and confirmed they've been received, but it doesn't appear on this table 10 corrected. But I will talk about it later, but it, it does need to be checked again that all the comments are listed there. Thank you, Chair. Okay. 
right? So that's question one. Um, so we move on to question two, <coughs> which is uh, from Mr. Charles Green. Is Mr. Charles Green available? Thank you, Chair. Can I confirm before I start that you all have my written question in front of you? Because it, it has some detailed tables on it, which needs some explanation. So my question relates to Agenda Item 10, as you know, which is the Shropshire Council Local Plan Review. And it's particularly about the consultation response summary on the preferred scale and distribution of development. But since I submitted that, two relevant things have occurred. Firstly, on Saturday, Councillor Lawrence, myself, Ian Kilby, and three other people shared a platform and gave short presentations at the conference in the Guildhall, called by Shrewsbury <coughs> Town Mayor, to help to address the realisation that the existing planning process is not delivering the quality of development that people want. We think part of the problem is the pursuit of unrealistic targets, and I explained why we think the Council's housing and economic targets are unrealistic, based on faulty figures, which is the substance of my question. May I be permitted to present Councillor Lawrence and Councillor Macy with a copy each of this book, which I referred to in support of our argument? Yeah, but you I'll, need I'll do that afterwards. Yeah. Secondly, late last week, the Council made available to us its detailed spreadsheet supporting the analysis behind the summary of consultation responses as now tabled before you at item 10. It is apparent that the figures include many instances where agents and developers have submitted multiple near identical responses which have each been counted into the reported figures separately. That seems to us to be a distortion of the consultation response. Returning then to my submitted question, and Please refer to your to the written question because it's it's the substance of it is table six and seven from the previous uh, consultation, and it relates to how those tables have been calculated. The, the tables have been calculated by reference to if we start at the, the, the table seven, the top line, balanced growth. There is an assumption the the, the council's assumption. The council's stance is that, that employment growth and housing growth are balanced by reference to these two tables. So that there is a near equivalence between the 304 employment land required on the top line of Table 7 and the 288 hectares required from Table 6. Turning to Table 7 first, the calculation goes, you need, it is said there will be 28,750 jobs deriving from the 28,750 houses. That's a, a slightly dubious assumption in itself. Leave that aside. 28,750. Each job requires 42.25 square metres. Multiply those two up. Divide by 10,000, which is the number of square metres in a hectare, and you come to 121. That then gets grossed up because the floor space needed for each employee is only reckoned to be 40% of the employment site itself. So that's then grossed up to get the 304. That's using a figure of an employment density of 42.25. Now in table six on the top line, it is said that, that the employment requirement is 14,900 jobs. That's the that's the figure that Shropshire Council I'm conscious for. of the time. You haven't you've run over run, but I'll give you a couple of minutes. But oh, thank you. I didn't realise you were timing me. I can't see You, you get three minutes. Thank you. Well, I, I did have a PowerPoint presentation which was a very distinct But thank you for allowing me a little extra time. So I'm just explaining how these figures go. So in that top table, table six, the, the the requirement for the employment density is 77.18 square metres per job in order to get to the 115 and then the 288, which is a very different figure. And it is a figure which, which doesn't speak of productivity. That's a figure that is actually higher than any of the 
industry standards mentioned in that bottom table, or in, in both the notes on that table. So 70 square metres a job is, is for warehousing. The, the council are using 77.18. If they use 42.25, that figure of 288 would be significantly lower, it'd be 157. So the question is, can the council explain the mismatch between those two figures? <coughs> and we also believe that the council should explain its dubious data <coughs> and why it favours developers in blatant disregard of the local population. Thank you. Thank I'm you. not sure I agree with the last comment, but I'll ask Councillor Robinson oh, yeah. to respond. As I say, I'm, I'm, <coughs> I'm, I'm prepared is around the question that yeah. was submitted, so that's that's the one I'm, I'm going to refer <coughs> to um, because obviously the question itself is quite technical <coughs> in nature. Um, so from, from my point of view, we welcome the question because we're happy to provide further clarification to the advice we've already provided to the CPRE. Um, in the consultation papers, tables 6 and 7 are contained in Appendix 2, and this explains how the Council came to the preferred employment land requirement of 305 hectares, and the evidence for both the productivity growth scenario, which is summarised in Table 6, and the balanced growth strategy summarised in Table 7. Um, the evidence for these two planned approaches to our economic future are different in one key respect. The producti productivity growth scenario was commissioned from consultants Oxford Economics using their economic model as part of the evidence for Shropshire's economic growth strategy. Their model predicts the net increase in jobs at 14,900 by assessing the anticipated performance of the Shropshire economy and the expected job gains and job losses. When job gains and job losses are deducted <coughs> from the model, then each job <coughs> that is sustained appears to need a larger amount of land to deliver it. However, the preferred approach of the balanced growth strategy in the local plan review was prepared by the authority using the evidence presented as part of the recent consultation. This strategy predicts only the anticipated job gains required to support housing delivery in the county and to sustain the communities within our development settlement. When only the anticipated job gains are considered, it's possible to see that a lower amount of land is actually required to deliver each one of the new jobs. Please note that the balanced growth strategy is still being developed. Um, the summary analysis of consultation responses presented in the report today recognises the desire of some respondents to see the strategy and the employment land requirement tested further. The consultation on preferred options presented last year identified how the authority will bring forward further evidence to test the strategy as part of our local plan review. So, I'm sorry that's all a little bit um, technical in nature, but I okay. think it's important for this to cover it. Okay, well, thank you very much. With respect, I don't think that answers the question. Thank you. Well, that's it. <laughs> right. We move I'll on. Just present these books here. Yeah. <coughs> thank you very much. Maybe I'll rob it. I'll follow it up. Something else. I'll, I'll give that one. Well, I'm going around that way anyway. Right. Item five and member questions. I'm not aware of any member questions. Right. Item six, scrutiny items. Um, is Cecilia here? Yep. Do you want to present it? Yes, that's very much. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to appraise Cabinet of the fact that, uh, first of all, Communities Overview is doing a study at the moment into community transport in the county. Um, many of you will be aware that community transport falls an absolutely vital <coughs> addition to the commercial transport services that the county has. Um, and uh, there is real concern at the moment about uh, provisions possibly coming in from the Department for Transport, which is going to bring into doubt the future of, of a number of community <coughs> transport groups. Um, the commercial operators, this, this, was all, this was all started by commercial operators who were concerned that some community transport groups were benefiting from commercial, tra uh, commercial contracts. Now, the real, the real uh, nub of the matter is that if you are a commercial operator, you have to have a transport operator's license. You have to, to conform with all sorts of very quite onerous uh, requirements. Whereas if you are a community transport group, 
your, uh, your legislative requirement is an awful lot lighter. Um, there is real concern now that uh, if the De Department for Transport, which has just gone out for consultation on this, uh, decides that community transport <coughs> groups have got to conform with legislation in the same way as commercial <coughs> operators, this is going to put an awful lot of them out of business. And I think it's really very important that we realise how important community transport is in this county at filling in the gaps, basically, because we know that we have a poor public transport system. Uh, we're such a large county. Um, a lot of areas do depend very heavily on their community transport schemes, most of which is on, uh, based on the dial ride version. So you ring up and then somebody comes along and picks you up and off you go. Um, and it is, the, 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 the real importance about this is that it does manage to reach those sections of the population that don't have their own transport. And um, actually, uh, therefore, rely very heavily on this. So um, as a result of this, it's proposed that we, we respond as a county to the consultation that's going out. The closure date is the 4th of May. Um, and so you will see this in the letter under uh, item 6. And I hope you will be happy to let that go, because it's terribly important that we make the point for structure that this is going to have a really poor impact on our transport services in the county. As it happens, I was, I was at Hinstock Parish Council last night, and a lady from Shrop, North Shropshire Wheelers yeah. was there, and she is very, very concerned. Yes, yes she said Simon she yes. met you the other day yes. and, and had this discussion. And is groups like that that will be severely affected yeah. if this becomes legislation? Yeah. So I think it is appropriate that we, uh, we do respond. And I have to say, this letter is excellent. It really sets the case out very well. Uh, and I, I think we, we will all probably want to endorse it very strongly. Well, but I will great. give others the opportunity to speak. Roger. Yeah. Can I endorse that completely? And if, if it's wanted, add my signature to it. So it, it is across party and it is from the council. I think rural areas will be, will be affected greatly if this is adopted as Cecilia points out it may do so. We want the most urgent and the most important one and contact all our MPs to ensure that they are aware of it. Yeah, all right, I'll work from where you're at. Just quickly, I fully support both that. Uh, just to say, paragraph uh, 12 in the letter suggests that local authority can award some of these contracts to the community, yeah, uh, buses in particular. Uh, I have to say that uh, looking in my own patch, because we have a statutory service which the contract is outside our boundary in Worcestershire and is total utter chaotic rubbish. Uh, we may have to put a community bus scheme to uh, link up the strategic Kidderminster Railway, Ludlow Railway and our post the graduates and of course the two hospitals. So I have to say that uh, we, we, you know, the independents will support this way. I'll go around the table then I'll come back to Alan. I was just going to say that um, certainly I contacted right at the very beginning of this process when this first became aware I contacted Daniel Patinsky's office and they are working on our behalf as well. This isn't an issue that just affects Shropshire. This is an absolutely exactly. ridiculous situation. It's another example of cracking enough with the sledgehammer. Right. Steve? As soon as this, I think it was October time last year, I wrote to the MP. Um, <coughs> MP took the letter to the Minister and I think uh, James uh, Bullocks has got a copy to it and the Minister has taken it on board to look at it but we action that straight away. Mm. Yeah. Right, Alan? I'm with you in detail, I'm not particularly uh, personally in, in, involved in, in this but uh, amongst all this uh, unanimity and, uh, and pleasure at joint working, shouldn't you also be writing to yourself complaining about the 1.5 million cuts in public transport that you are going to impose on Shropshire residents in the near that's, future. That's not the matter, is it? No, I know it isn't, but it's just a, it might be an additional uh, action that you let, wish to take to the consequence of what we hear. Let, about let's the not have anything negative. This is a, a positive reaction from this council to something from the government. And I think we should all endorse it because this is some excellent work, and it does actually show the value of, of the overview process within this council. You know, we, we really have started to, to make it work very well, and this, I, I can't couldn't think of a better response than this. And I do congratulate Cecilia on, on her committee. This is really good, and I, I'm going to ask 
the members of cabinet to endorse this yeah. and, and we'll see about how we send it where we get the signatures cross party uh, i think that can be arranged yes, if you want to. Yeah, yeah i think everybody would be happy for that you know because it would make more sense so we'll, we'll sort that and thank you very much for your work right. thank you very much sir. right item seven uh, the draft uh, Shropshire Council corporate plan, which is included in the pack here. Um, I think we probably would be all happy to agree, agree with this, but we are proposing that we will um, refresh and, and bring out a new <coughs> corporate plan as, as we go forward. <coughs> Who wants to start? Oh, well, Alan first. <coughs> um, yeah, full of good intent, obviously, and uh, I won't agree with some of that good intent. However, um, <coughs> I have to refresh my recollection of the report by the peer group that came to study um, the, the council um, last week, and I am a bit concerned about some of the implications in that peer group for the, the finance and some of these objectives, because they do look at financial planning and viability, and clearly a corporate plan is largely founded on the ability to have sound financial planning and viability. And there are a number of questions that are raised by this external assessment. And <coughs> it points out that there's something like a 106 million gap in the next five years. And it but looks at the way we're in which... We're talking about the corporate plan, not the council's finances. Can you... No, can I'm, I'm saying that the corporate, the corporate plan, plan is the corporate plan or the pursuit of the corporate plan. Plan is absolutely based on the finance. But that's what the decision today is about. Our aims within the corporate plan. Well, I'm It'll be a separate discussion about finance yeah. at a later stage. Well, I'm, 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 I'm suggesting that you may wish to withdraw this version of the corporate plan and take account of what's said about the financial viability of this council <coughs> before you reissue it, because clearly financial viability affects some of the objectives and ambitions that are within it. And it may well be, and I would suspect that there are going to be gaps in, in, in this if you looked at the, what they're saying. So they're saying that of the £34 million pounds that uh, you're planning to save or bring in in terms of extra income between 18, 19 and 1920, something like £12 million <coughs> pounds of that is high risk. So of the £10 million digital savings, they're saying that £6 million pounds is at high risk. 4.7 commercial income, 2 million is at high risk. 13 uh, service savings, 4 million is at high risk. They also point out, and I think we've been banging on about this for some time, that the money that you are taking from reserve is not sustainable. And so they conclude in this section on financial planning. But can and I bring you back to the corporate plan? You're talking about something, else. I'm going to shut you up if you don't, you know, because we're talking about the corporate plan, not the council's finances. No, well, the corporate plan is, is meaningless. Well, I'm unless sorry. There are the if, finances. if you don't talk to the corporate plan, I'll move on to well, Roger. Well, I'm saying, well, all right. I, the corporate plan, it seems to me, is meaningless unless we can show within it that there is a financial planning and the viability of the council in order to fulfil the objectives and the ambitions that are within it. Um, and what this particular group said last week is that given the risks, there needs to be more detailed plans to provide assurance. And that will come forward. So we are moving on now to Roger because you're not talking about the corporate plan. I am. Plan. No, you're well, not. You see, you're you're talking about well, finance. I, I think the people outside this room would recognise that unless well, there's some financial planning and viability <coughs> Let's associated with this, this it's meaningless. Right. I'm sorry, Roger. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I echo a lot of the thoughts that Alan made, but <laughs> talking about the corporate plan itself, I think it needs to be withdrawn, and I look forward to a debate at full council when it comes from there. Because if one looks at the front page, working to make Shropshire a great place to live, learn, work, and visit. Just picking out two items, of the action plan in particular, on page 35 or page 43 in the council agenda, um, improving standards of education improvement. Yeah. Recent decisions of the cabinet are going to really call that into question. The school improvement service, as per the report, as per one of the heads that came along to the scrutiny committee, he said his school would fail without the school improvement service being there. So I would ask whether that 
uh, to live, learn, work and visit is correct, improving standards of education well, achievement. Let me just challenge you on that. The standard of education in this county is going up year on year. Yeah, and I mean, I've, I've agreed with that and pushed for it and agree. What is being said now is that it will start its peak. It will start to go down because the school advisory service will not be there <coughs> to advise the schools. As a head, and anybody that came along to that meeting would hear a head who is at the sharp end, who is actually trying to assist some small schools. He said if the school advisory <coughs> service was not there, he would not be able to do it. Those schools <coughs> would be closed. Well, on that point, I'm going to ask Nick Parsley to respond. Well. Simply, that was one head. I have met other heads who would say exactly the opposite. <coughs> right. Through you, Chairman, the actual report quotes and marks out the risks that this council faces by doing it. But I'll, I'll pass on, Chairman. If one looks at then at page 41 or 49, annual place plan review, <coughs> December 2018. We've been promising that every year for the last four years, <coughs> but it has never happened. Parish councils put in their place plan review, feed it into the machinery here in the Shire Hall, they never get any answer back. And then they're asked again the following year to put it in. Promises were made this year that it would be out last, last December, last autumn. It never happened. And you're aware that we're doing a full review of SIL and place plans at the moment and that report will come forward shortly. Nothing to do with place plans, Chairman. This is parish plan. The priorities that well, parish councils put on SIL, that parish councils put on the SIL that they have to, to spend in their own local area. It's supposed to be done annually yeah. and parish councils kept informed. They have never had any feedback. And I brought it up in other places and said about it and action was being taken. But still, they are not getting the feedback. Robert Macy wants to respond. Well, can I just say, at the end of last year, parish councils were approached. They have had the documentation. There's been a lot of work on revising the look of the, the place plan documents to make them easier to understand. We've had officers going out and speaking to numbers of them, including my own. And they've come back in, but that all forms part of what Peter referred to, which is the review of the community infrastructure level. And I've actually been at parish meetings recently where there have been officers of this council actually talking to parishes. Yeah, the parish plan sends in a formal response on paper to Shropshire Council saying what their priorities are. The education department and all the rest of it should then write their formal responses and there should be a formal written response to go back to parish councils. That formal written response never happens, as has been quoted in many other places. Right, well, I'll take that on board. I'm not sure that's actually what the rules say, but anyway, carry on. No, that's just two examples. There'll be a further debate to council, no doubt. But as I say, I think it needs to be re-looked at as a result of the peer assessment and the availability of resources, but also some of the things that are in it, I do not think are achievable. <coughs> well, I have to say, I probably spent more time with the peer reviewers than anybody in this room, other than Clive, probably. And the impression I got was they felt this was a realistic corporate plan. They do accept there are challenges with finances, but we all accept that. That's nothing new, that's been the case for you. But they did give me the impression that they were more than happy with this draft corporate plan. They thought we were heading as a council in the right direction. We were delivering good services to the people of Shropshire, um, and that there's no reason why we shouldn't continue to do so. But as ever, there will be challenges. There always are with councils. So this is what we've been asked to agree. The recommendations are on page five that we review and agree this refreshed corporate plan, which I think we should do, and that a new corporate plan for the next coming years are developed during the summer and autumn of this year, and that will be adopted by council in December. Uh, so that gives time and you'll be, your input is welcome into the, the discussions about the new corporate plan. So as we go forward, and we'll make sure that happens. So I'm asking uh, the cabinet to agree that we do that, that we accept this as the refreshed draft corporate plan and that as we go to the autumn and the summer and autumn we actually develop a new plan that it will, that will be sent to council in December and ask for its adoption at that point. So is everyone happy with that? Yeah. Right. Thank you. We 
move on. Item 8. Phase 2 Early Health Family Hubs. Councillor McFarty. Thank you, Edith. Um, when I introduced the last report to Cabinet in January, I said it was a very long report um, with a simple message. This, I think, is probably even longer than the January report. Um, I make no apologies for that because the full consultation feedback and analysis is there in the report and I'm sure some people will have looked at it very carefully. But the simple message is the same as it has been probably over the last year or so. Um, and that is that early help is the right thing to do. Um, it saves families from getting into trouble or from getting further into trouble. Um, ultimately, that saves the council money, but more important, it <coughs> limits the number, reduces the number of children that we have to bring into care. And nobody wants to bring children into care that we don't need to bring into care. So early help, as it says, at part, the name is on the tin, it's a, it's a really sensible policy to pursue and one that councils across the country do pursue. Um, but the policy needs to evolve and change. A great deal has happened recently. We had an excellent task and finish group which was working all the way through last autumn. It was a cross-party task and finish group um, and they spent a considerable amount of time looking in detail at the way in which early help is delivered at the moment and broadly speaking their proposals were adopted by Cabinet in January. We then went out to consultation, as I say, the full analysis and, and details of the consultation response is in Appendix C. Broadly speaking, the um, consultation responses support the proposals in principle. This is the next stage of the report where we look in much more detail at how the hub <coughs> service model might work in practice. Um, at the moment, Leader, we are spending a very considerable amount of money on buildings, some of which, frankly, are very poorly used. Um, and I, I hope everyone would agree that that is not a sensible thing to do, to be spending money on buildings rather than frontline services. Um, so this is quite a, a radical proposal for reducing the number of buildings from which children's services operate. I think it's important to use one's words very carefully here. That does not mean the building is going to close because if there is a private day nursery in there already, that will continue. It is simply that <coughs> the children's centre services will no longer operate from that building. Um, the detailed proposals are set out uh, in paragraph 1.4 um, and the um, important next step is to say that of course these proposals <coughs> need looking at carefully um, by the people that um, use them and by the general public by members of this council and other interested parties. We're proposing a very lengthy uh, and careful period of consultation that will go through until the middle of July. Um, technically speaking, it doesn't start until the beginning of next month, but people are already responding. I'm very pleased that they are. Um, and we are very interested in what people have to say. I would be very surprised, Leader, if some of the detailed proposals <coughs> are changed a bit. That's the whole point of our consultation. Um, and there will then be a feedback from that um, to Cabinet in September. If I could just refer everyone to the uh, lengthy list of event dates at the very back of the report, starting at the beginning of June, and the month, so as I say, until the middle of July, there are a very large number of uh, meetings across the whole of Shropshire at different times of the day and in different places 
and of course people will be very welcome to respond in writing directly to me, to their local councillor, to the Director of Children's Services and indeed via the website in the usual way. Um, I hope that the Cabinet will approve the recommendations which are set out in paragraph 2.1 and I move those recommendations here. Okay, thank you. Leslie? Um, I have to say thank you very much for a, it is a long report but I think it, it, it has got everything in it and it's nice to see actually a report that's got all the consultation responses in it instead of some, a selected one sometimes. Um, I do have a couple of questions. If, if currently a children's centre is in a school and the school is going to take over that building, what cost implications are there for the schools? Um, the building will be on land which the council already owns. That's the starting point. So there's no purchase required. Of course, if the school is going to expand into a building which they haven't previously been using, um, we would expect the school then to take over the running costs of that building. But essentially, it's a very simple exercise. Um, and of course, if the school needs the extra space, <coughs> hopefully it's saving um, expensive or <coughs> otherwise expensive capital provision. Just answer, can I just one? Yeah, yeah. Um, change is a difficult thing, I'm pretty sure. <coughs> Have you got a specific plan of how you're going to work with families if they think? That they've been unfairly disadvantaged, or if they, you know if they're unhappy about the changes. Um, I think the first thing to say is that <coughs> children's centres go back a considerable number of years, um, and a very important government policy initiatives has brought us um, free childcare um, for significant numbers of our parents. Um, and that has in itself <coughs> reduced the need for children's centre services. So there is a great deal of free childcare available. Um, now, obviously, it's not going to meet everybody's needs. There are people who will get free childcare, I think, from the age of two upwards. Um, others will only get the 15 hours a week from the child's um, age three to four. Um, I might have to refer to the Director of Children's Services for some of the detail, but that's the principle. And of course, if there is a gap in provision, then that's the whole point about the consultation. We might need to make sure that we fill that gap. Councillor right. Steve Davenport. Yeah, I'm uh, Nick. Uh, having done a couple of consultations recently, how, do you, how are you going to maximise your responses? And do you think you've allowed enough time? I think we've allowed a considerable amount of time to need it. As I say, the, the consultation, although technically speaking it doesn't start until the end of this month, uh, June, um, people are already responding, people are taking an interest. I'm really pleased they, they are. Uh, we've had some publicity um, very helpfully through the media, through the Shropshire Star and um, BBC Shropshire. Um, I hope people will really take this opportunity. I hope every member of the council will take the opportunity to get involved um, by talking to other people, but also by themselves submitting comments. We, were, we are very anxious to draw attention to the ways in which people can consult. As I say, it is um, actually over two months. We're saying six weeks. But in fact, the consultation starts now um, and it runs through until the middle of July. So it's a very lengthy period. Um, and I welcome any ideas of, of how we can publicize that. It's a very genuine exercise. As I said, I would be surprised if when we come back in September, I'd be surprised if some of these detailed proposals don't change a bit. And that will be because of the consultation exercise. Right, Roger. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm in not in any difficulty, but I do note that I'm not sure where this council is going as far as young people. Uh, the cabinet member, uh, after the council had agreed its budget, suddenly took £60,000 off the youth budget with no notice, and that only became noticeable when it came to scrutiny. School advisory service going to be closed, 268000 
family hooks, £875,000 here. I did raise in Cabinet a few months ago concerns on the way the consultation was carried out that, that has resulted in this feedback. And uh, I am told that one consultation event, the officer that went there promised <coughs> to organise an evening meeting and then was told, no, it can't happen. So the members in, uh, organized an evening meeting at which a double figure of people turned up for it. And as a result, for, at that area, there's been a large number of responses. I see <coughs> I'm aware amongst the responses, there's been very, very few. And if a, a letter, email was sent to Councillor Barnsley, and I'll just read part of it. And as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been a response to it, but I'll read it through. And it's from a fellow, fellow councillor. Dear High Councillor Barnsley, I've just read through the papers for Phase 2 Early Health Family Hubs. The north of Shropshire seems <coughs> to have done very well out of this, as usual. Our closest hub, and, he quote, and this one quotes Bishop's Castle, our closest hub to Bishop's Castle will be 40 minute bus journey away. It also seems our hugely successful and very well used centre is now deemed to be not required. Uh, and he asked for an answer and asking for a, a breakdown of costs so that he can understand why it's being done. And that is just one example. We've got a huge geographic county, 40 minutes travel by the present bus service to get to it. I'm not sure. So I will be interested in the uh, results for it. And I say thank you for the consultation that's there and some of the consultation events are happening in the evening which is, which is which is good so I do take note of the improvement in that but I think some of the results that are there uh, are not really representative because I think <coughs> a lot of the affected people did not know it was taking place and I did raise this at the cabinet as I say a few months ago uh, there have been conversations and uh, I think we have all learned from it and maybe this will be done better However, I do have concerns about what is being proposed for young families and the youth in this county. I recognise <coughs> the financial constraints, but are we, are we taking the money from vulnerable people and places where we will come to uh, cost us more, create problems for us in future years? Thank you, Chairman. Hey, I'm, I'm interested in the mention of Bishop's Castle. Um, this is actually rather a good example of a children's centre which has one session <coughs> a week during term time only. Um, it is also co-located with a private provider and as I said at one stage during my introduction, this is not shutting the building. The private provider will carry on. It is simply that the stay and play which, as I say, is one morning a week during term time, um, will be discontinued. So there's no there's no proposal to close the building. Um, the um, I think it's called the um, Crowgate Child Centre private provider will carry on. Um, but these are proposals, leader, and um, we will be having a meeting um, in Bishop's Castle. Uh, I just say on the 19th of June in the evening and I welcome very much what the people of Bishop's Castle will have to say at that meeting and indeed in all the other ways in which responses can be made. The reality is we have got to change the way we go forward with all sorts of services as a council and change is always difficult but we have got to change the way we deliver services in the county uh, and we will continue to do so. And let's not forget, we did get a good Ofsted report. You know, we're one of the better producing, better councils in the country <coughs> in the way we handle children's services. Our education is improving year on year. So let's not beat ourselves up. We're a good council providing really good services for the children of this county. Uh, and then, you know, we sometimes forget that. Steve. Thank you. And then you, you touched on it briefly with Bishop Castle, but it was an issue raised with me locally um, in the last couple of weeks. The two two centres which exist at the moment, which are you know, in my locality, so you say, especially um, Mordor and Baschurch. What, what's the hourly usage, or what's the total usage of, of those centres? Are they well used, or 
Well, they're, they're just examples, Lee, but thank you. Um, the, the Bass Church one, which obviously I take an interest in because it's in my own electoral area, it is open for less than a full morning. I think it's four, four hours on Thursday mornings, again, during term time only. If you do the maths, um, that comes out at something like 150, 160 hours in the year that the centre is used for children's centre services and that is rather less than all the hours there are in a week so it's a bit of a crude comparison but that centre is open as a children's centre for less than one week in the year and the rest of the time um, that building is simply you know, eating up heat, light, all the other services that um, are required to keep it open. Um, it's also a good example because the existing private provider will of course continue in the bit of the building that it uses. Um, more does another interesting example, in fact this is perhaps uh, the most extreme example of our children's centre. It is completely unused and has been unused I think for well over a year. Um, we're putting money into buildings, significant amounts of money into buildings which are either you know, not used at all or used to a very small extent. That doesn't seem to me to be a good use of resources. We should put the money instead into the focused, targeted um, services that are proposed in this report which actually goes back for the best part of a year. Thank you. Any other? Oh, yeah. I, just briefly, no. really. <coughs> if, if I look at where they're proposing Ludlow and Bridge North, uh, Ludlow Rock Spring is actually quite difficult to get to uh, because the bus service doesn't go within what I call reasonable, particularly if you've got a family and a couple of kids. Uh, I can't see that being particularly easy. So I'd be looking for another building which we already own in uh, Ludlow where the bus stop isn't a million miles away from it that could be better used than what it is at the moment and I won't go any further than that to share my own rant on about that. The bit that really worries me is if we're reviewing, which we are, maternity services at the moment and there is an emphasis in the proposals that there should be family, that uh, uh, anti and postnatal should be family orientated, are we uh, having any discussions at all with the health side of that, because it would be really silly to have a family hub in one place, but we'll say Ludlow for instance, and another family hub attached to the maternity side, that would be a duplication which would be illogical, and that's the brightest word I can find for it, I must say. So all I'm just saying to you is that where <coughs> these hubs are, um, the public bus services, of which we, my parish, my parish is virtually denuded of it, uh, are quite difficult. You can actually get a bus if it runs into Ludlow. Well, and there's actually a train station there as well, so that's something. But where it is in Ludlow would be a key thing. I'm all for uh, disposing of inappropriate buildings um, because they are very costly, uh, and I would certainly like to see the services in them in a building to which is uh, uh, decent, etc., etc. Just to make that one picture. Rock, Rock Spring is quite interesting because I've done a site visit there a couple of times, yeah, I, and it's a busy I, place. But oh, I yes. would agree with you; it's not in the flow of the town centre. It is. If you're looking to bring the outskirts in, which uh, probably, you, if that's what you we'll, need, we'll have a bit of a look at that. Yeah. But I know the chief executive's <coughs> doing a lot of work and putting yes, various yes. services together. I think Mark's asked number of interesting questions, but of course uh, Lee Chapman's not here, and Andrew and Lee Begley may want to comment. Uh, if that question of are we working with our health sector partners so we get good facilities that offer a range of services that people need, uh, well we, we are at an early stage with discussions with the CCG, uh, not only on how our workforce is integrated, how the out of hospital landscape, in other words where GP surgeries are located, uh, 
but also how we pool budgets. Those three things are coming together in a really useful way. We, we, we haven't been there before, but I can assure you, Margin outside this meeting, I'm happy to give you a briefing or any other member as well on how we're making progress. It's too early for that to come formally to Cabinet yet, but there's some really good green shoots out there, and I know that that's an agenda you've been keen on, uh, and I'll make sure you're informed where we are with that project. Okay, thank you. Right. There's some recommendations on page 54. I didn't know whether they were seconded, but I'm quite happy to second Nick's uh, proposal. Um, nobody else seems to want to speak, so can I, I ask Cabinet to put support for the recommendations? Okay, thank you very much. Item 9, application by Cleebury Mortimer Parish Council to be considered as a neighbourhood plan area. Oh, Macy. Um, the report in front of you, we've had a number of these come forward. Um, this is where a local community decides that it wants to look at the route of going down a neighbourhood plan. Um, our role in this is to make sure that the area um, that they're considering for the purposes of preparing that plan are the good and so on. Um, the sequel of the report that we did, they approached us last summer, we carried out a consultation, which we had two responses. Neither of which are objecting to the idea of the proposed area for the neighbourhood plan. Um, at this stage, it is important to make clear, as it does in 1.3, that this recommendation it doesn't deal with the proposed or potential content of any neighbourhood plan, which are issues to be considered by Cleveland Mortimer Parish Council in cooperation with Shropshire Council in due course. So, this is purely saying that the area, the map contained within here, we are happy for them to take that forward and consider the neighbourhood plan. Um, we've got a couple of recommendations in there which I would, I'd like to move and take them forward. Well, I'm first, then Matt. <coughs> Thank you, Speaker. I just wanted to give uh, Cabinet some <coughs> background to where this has actually come from. And I actually think it's pertinent to the work we're actually undertaking. Over the last three to five years, Kibri has had three, at least three planning applications as I can remember for what I would call infill land close to the actual town centre for development of properties, probably 12 to 20 houses. And every time we have asked for bungalows and retirement departments, and all we've had delivered is four and five bedroom detached houses. Now, because that's what makes the money. Now, it, it, it's, it's wrong for the community because we've got plenty of four and five bedroom houses, and if we can have retirement houses or bungalows, we could actually unblock some of those bigger houses with two people living in because they downsize the smaller houses. So effectively, working as the local member with the town council, with the um, allocation of housing coming forward, I pushed them into doing this, to actually do the neighbourhood plan, get the style and type of housing that they want delivered through that plan, and then it becoming part of the planning policy moving forward. And, and Chair, we spoke, we spoke previously and with Robert, this goes into a, a bigger question for this council, is how do we let communities have the type and style of housing they want, not what developers want to deliver? <coughs> and I think we're working with Robert on the housing, the type of housing working group to see how in the change in the development plan, how we can move that forward. And I just thought it was a pertinent point that the only way Sibley can see them doing this is by having a neighbourhood plan. So I fully support the recommendation. It's a difficult area, but yes, we've got to try and do that. Yeah, and it's fully supported by the community. They've got a good working group outside the parish council, or well, town council now, sorry, and it's going well. Good, thank you. Right, Matt. Just one quick addition to that. I fully support everything that William said. Uh, we also have expanding small businesses, and I think that's vital for where we are because it provides a range of skills for our post-16s in apprenticeships or post-18s, and for me, uh, the houses, yes, of course the houses are important. We've got nowhere for any of our locals to rent at the moment. It's absolutely diabolical. Calm down, Nigel, you mustn't get upset about it. But I also want to emphasise how many really vibrant small businesses we've got there, and thank you to Jim for all the help and support that they've given you. I have to say, when I came to Cleavery, I was very impressed with the town. It's a lovely town, and there seems to be quite a bit of vibrancy around the place, and, and anything we can do to help, and if this helps to continue that, it's got to be good. We're, we're good. We've got all the facilities that you need, which is why the, the four and five bedroom houses do sell, 
But that doesn't mean to say we haven't got a core of the population there, which is, Willem says, we need to downsize. We have a funny group that meet on Saturday morning. We meet in a pub, but we only drink <coughs> coffee. I <laughs> and they want to downsize, but they don't want to be agree with their connections with all the facilities. Uh, but they want to downsize nothing. Absolutely. Well, hopefully this will help. Okay. Rob, it was only to say it's heartening to see that the local members are here taking an interest in supporting it. Yeah. And I would echo the points of around policy and style of things and trying to take control of what sort of development we get is vitally important. So mm -hmm. I see how it's in development. Other comments? Right, so there's some recommendations on page 155. Everyone happy with those? Yeah, that seems to have support. Right, moving on. Item 10, Shropshire Council Local Plan Review. Okay, um, you've got the report in front of you. Um, you'll see from the summary that it's seeking to, to update on a number of different things. Uh, the first is we need, we need to be proposing revising the local development scheme, which includes all the documents to do with the local plan <coughs> the time that will follow. Um, we've included a summary analysis of the feedback we've had so far from the initial stage of the consultation. We had around six, over 600 responses to that. Um, and we're also updating as part of our authority monitoring report where we've got a number of important issues. Um, if I take the local development scheme first, given that I've already mentioned we've had over 600 responses um, to the consultation, including a number of high-profile sites which have been put forward, including ones that have been covered in the media and so on, um, as well as a lot from the community and other consultees, we've decided that it's, it's appropriate for, for us to take more time to consider the responses that we've had um, before we prepare our preferred options. Um, so really, we are looking at, now we're talking about submitting the plan in December 2019, um, which means we won't be going back to communities until later on in the year now. Um, and that is purely around taking the right amount of time to consider the representations that have come in and put all the evidence that we need to behind the plan. As I've been heard from the public questions and so on, this has to be examined um, by an independent speaker. Uh, so it's about trying to get that all correct for this time. Um, as far as the summary of responses, at this point, they are there, They've, we've set them out under the different headings that we went out to consultation on. Um, there's a mixture of views. Uh, at this point, I'm not particularly intending to go through those because they're still being considered by officers as to feeding into the next stage of what we put forward with options. Um, obviously, though, a lot of them made mention of the bigger sites and you've heard there's an interest around in employment, around housing requirement. Um, I think from that point of view, those should be dealt with, but there are going to be a number of conversations between now and when the preferred options would come out. Um, as far as the authority monitoring statements, this is talking, a lot of this is talking about the progress we're making on the plan, because obviously we have a plan in place until 2026. Um, so as far as that one goes, we, we've got the plan in place, but working on the other part. Um, the, bits, the other bits that are interesting is talking about what we're actually delivering in terms of the authority. Um, and as you'll see, 5.5, when we actually talk about housing delivery, 2016-17, which we have the biggest for, we've reported previously that we had just over 1,900 dwellings completed, um, which exceeds our requirement, obviously. The length of the local plan means we need to cover our requirement in the long term. Um, but what I would like to note is it did contain the completion of 441 affordable dwellings within that, um, which is a significant increase on the previous year. And it is something that the council is sees as key to part of its responsibilities is to trying to help deliver more affordable housing. Um, currently, we have a 6.04 year supply of deliverable housing land. As many of you will know, five years is the minimum that we need. We cannot afford to drop below that, otherwise um, our policies carry best weight. And the only other point that was in about that was 
nearly a third of the housing development took place on brownfield land, which is something that has been raised before to cabinet from members about why aren't we making use of brownfield land, so it's nice to see that a third of that is delivering on there. Um, as far as the only other one I really wanted to, well, a couple I wanted to highlight was employment land delivery. That's over the long term, the last <coughs> seven years, 108 hectares of employment land, obviously the new plan is looking to build on that, but it's, it is good to see that we can deliver where we say we're going to want employment land delivery. And then the final one was SIL. Um, it's a subject which creates large amounts of debate, and as, as Roger referred to earlier, that's how we're planning to make use of the infrastructure contributions. Um, and as the leader referred to recently, we've been having a task and finish member group looking at that. I want to thank them for the work they've done on, on this. It's an important subject and as highlighted in the summary from the consultation responses, we need the infrastructure to support our plans. Um, so the results of that task and finish group will feed into a paper and some recommendations that will be considered at future cabinet meetings. <coughs> but I think from that point of view we're, we're showing that we're taking the we're taking the appropriate amount <coughs> of time to develop the plan, but in the meantime, we are delivering the housing that we need. And I have to say, I'd rather you talk slightly longer and got it right than rather than rush in. You know, and I think that's what we're doing. Roger. Uh, thank you. Um, can we get you and welcome the local member group who is looking at the local plan and also the one that was referred to by Mike Willem. It seems to be working, and hopefully, we can come forward with some recommendations. For it, which could be acceptable. But what I wanted to speak to essentially was the community hubs, and I did refer to it, this table 10, and the uh, uh, what is in it, and there may be some inaccuracies, which I think the community enablement officers have, have been asked to actually look at, so to be assured that they will be looked at. But also, I'm also being told that in the housing that is for the uh, community hubs, there seems to be some <coughs> confusion about the house numbers that can be included, whether it's the houses that have been built or the houses with planning applications approved, looking at the future <coughs> of the hubs and the future of housing in those hubs. And I would ask that this be clarified in time for when the meetings with the proposed parishes, which are to be hubs, is held so that everybody on the table is coming from the, a similar sheet and everybody understands. Uh, note also the authority monitoring statement is 2016-17. There have been some parishes come forward for neighbourhood plans since then, of course. So there's more than what is actually in that paragraph. Uh, but yeah, welcome it, look forward to taking it. We do need to take it forward. But, oh, and one last comment, and uh, I'm I don't know, I've been asked, the new NPPF in housing delivery test will come into force in November. What impact will these changes of rules have on the local plan? I don't know. I don't know. I don't so know. So I will be given an answer or one chairman. I'm not well, sure. To be honest with you, with the hope of it being that technical in nature, I'm going to look to the back of the room. <laughs> 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 I think if you can cover what you can cover and yes. if we can do that with response to the rest. The specific point on the housing delivery test, is that the one? Yeah, yeah. And the, and the new NPPF, which yes. consultation is just finishing on? Yes, consultation. We will be making a response at an officer level to that consultation, a composite across various services which it affects, uh, and that will be put in shortly. I think the deadline is next week, isn't it? Yeah, so we will be good for response in. Uh, we are fully aware of the housing <coughs> and confident we will be able to meet that test uh, on the basis of the plans that we've already got. It would surprise you to know that we participated that test has been well trailed already uh, in various sort of uh, early versions of the guidance that was due out and so on. The government's formally consulting on its changes now, so in effect they've confirmed what we anticipated in large measure. The, the key test remains five-year land supply, really, which um, the council makes this covered already, of course, and uh, we, we maintain over six years at this point. But it is important that we keep the plan up to date, 
and uh, has been widely recognised already. It's really important that we take the time to make sure we can do a proper job. Uh, all of the various detailed considerations, including those covered in public questions earlier, will of course all be addressed in detail and uh, argued over as part of the formal examination of the plan before the independent planning inspector appointed by the state for housing government. So um, those sorts of issues will be gone into in enormous uh, detail at that stage. And anything that we can't resolve between now and when that happens, there will be an opportunity for people to maintain their objections and have those objections heard at the state as part of that process, which is already but the housing delivery test specifically, yes, we're aware of it, uh, confident we can meet it at this point, but it remains a further thing for us to keep an eye on as we move forward in terms of delivery. The point that uh, uh, was made about um, the numbers for community hubs and how much we count uh, towards a guideline, uh, obviously at this point there are no published guidelines for community <coughs> hubs. Those are things which we will be engaging directly with the parish councils in the areas concerned and with local members to discuss uh, over the next couple of months or so. And uh, that, that uh, discussion will take on board uh, what's been happening and when uh, thus far uh, and try to use that information in terms of a track record, in terms of delivery for a particular place, to set an appropriate guideline moving forward for this new plan period. Okay. Everyone seems content. Yeah, I'd move the recommendations and just add, I think I've had a few members approach me about adding our thanks to Adrian and his team, yes. the way yeah. that they're yeah. approaching yeah. this yeah. with community. Yeah. Yeah. In a very, very difficult area of time, so yeah. we are appreciative of what you do. Uh, and again, if there are any further items or consultation notes that need feeding in, Adrian's always, uh, I'm sure he's got a team of people who, who well, a small team, I wouldn't say a big team, who are, who are dealing with all of them. Small Yes, so we do want to congratulate you. We do acknowledge all the good work you have done. Right, in terms of um, the, the decision, I think you're all happy that we accept the, the report. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. Right, thank you all very much. <coughs>